In the previous videos, we've talked about the postulates or the assumptions behind special relativity, and there's only two assumptions. There's The first one is that there's no preferred inertial reference frame, and the second is that the speed of light, which we denote by C, is independent of the speed of whatever source is emitting that light V. And we're going to use these assumptions to see some of the weird effects that special relativity predicts. And the tools that we use to look at that are space-time diagrams. So let's draw a space-time diagram. So here's our space axis, and here's our time axis, which is scaled so beams of light travel on 45-degree uh, diagonal lines. Now let's say in this frame of reference we have two observers and one we're just going to put right on the origin so so here's here's one observer and we're going to call that person person A and a little ways away from him is person A prime and we'll say that this is uh, the frame of reference of A and A prime so this is the position according to A and this is the time according to A. Now let's say that both of these two observers have clocks and they want to synchronize those clocks so they can see if they agree on how they're both interpreting time. Well you can't send an instantaneous signal so let's come up with a method where they can synchronize their clocks and that method is going to be person A is going to send a light signal and person A prime is going to receive that light signal and send it back. So A prime knows when they received the signal, person A knows when they sent the signal and when they received the return signal, and the way they synchronize their clocks is person A takes this time, uh, cuts it in half, so they go halfway on that axis, and then these two points they say are simultaneous. So it makes sense. Person A will say, okay, I'm sending a signal to you. You send one back to me with what your clock is reading. So say this reads, you know, one o'clock. And then when I receive your signal back, I will set my clock such that at this time, it would have also been one o'clock. So we've set our simultaneous clocks. And we could have an infinite number of observers all spread out through this space, all at rest with, with respect to each other, and then synchronize all of our clocks. So we can determine what all of us agree is, is, uh, is a simultaneous event. Well, let's say we have, uh, have a different observer. Uh, and this we're going to call this person B. So you know, there's one person right on the origin. Uh, this is C times the time of B. Uh, so here's B, and here is B prime, and these two people are also uh, at rest with respect to each other. So they're going to do the exact same thing, uh, the exact same thing to synchronize their clocks and, and say, be able to say, what is simultaneous? You send a light signal back and forth, and the person who originally sent the signal they go halfway in between when they sent the signal and when they received the signal and they can match up those times. Well, what if person B is moving with respect to person A? How will person A, how will system A watch this synchronizing process occur for, for person B? So I'm going to draw this one a little bit bigger. So we have So we have position for A and C times time for A. And here's, here's person A standing right here. But person B is going to be moving with some velocity. And person B prime is going to be moving with the same velocity as B. So B and B prime are moving such that their separation distance is always constant. Well, we have our method for synchronizing B and B prime's clocks. You send a signal from B to B prime, 
and B prime sends that signal back to B. And these systems act in exactly the same way because we've said there's no preferred inertial frame. So that's our first assumption. And our second assumption is that the velocity of light is independent of the velocity of the source. So when person B sends the signal to B prime, it's still going on a, on a 45 degree angle. Uh, my, my angle might be a little bit off, but, but you'll get the point. And it's received at B prime, and they send the signal back. Uh, again, moving at a 45 degree angle because of that second assumption. And let's just make sure we see where it intersects, where the signal is returned to B. And the way we synchronize these clocks is we find the midpoint on here, which looks like it's going to be about here. And then we say that according to B and B prime, this point and this point are simultaneous. But we notice that that is going to be slightly tilted upwards. It's person A and A prime would say that this is simultaneous. But person B and B prime are going to say that this is simultaneous. So this shows us that depending on your frame of reference, you will disagree as to what you see as happening simultaneously. So if we were to draw uh, another, another diagram, let's draw... So, so to illustrate what we've just done is if that's the spatial, uh, if this is constant time, but, uh, but my spatial position is changing for A, and this is, I'm saying at a set position, but my, uh, but my time is changing for A, then in person B's frame of reference, they're going to say that that's my time axis and my spatial axis is actually going to look like this. So I kind of tilt my spatial axis and observers A and B will disagree on what is simultaneous. And the geometry of this is such that if this is a beam of light being sent out, if this is a beam of light being sent out, then this angle, um, this angle is going to be equal to this angle here. So the two axes kind of fold up towards each other. And the faster you're going, the faster uh, this observer is going relative to, uh, relative to A. Let's say there's a third observer the faster you're going, the tighter in uh, these axes are going to be. So that could be the time of C, and this could be the spatial axis of C. So this is a really weird effect and shows us that the idea that two events are simultaneous is actually depends on your frame of reference. Different observers will disagree on, on what is simultaneous and this will, uh, this will come in and help us develop a new idea of, of uh, what is in the future of a certain point and what is in the past of a certain point. And we'll look at that in, in the next uh, video.